Hi again, Year 12s. Uh, we are getting through them now. So we're up to the Greek vase uh, by Rosemary Dobson. Let's get straight into it. So as usual, we'll do a read through from start to finish before analysing stanza by stanza. So here we go. The Greek vase. In the garden, a Greek vase brimful of leaves fallen from the grapevine. When the wind blows. The leaves spill out like an alphabet. Twisting tendrils join the letters in phrases. A sentence is blown my way. Some words perhaps dissevered from the Iliad or the Odyssey, reformed by hazard of wind and season. Treading carefully among the sentences, lines, whole stanzas on the paving, I think or are they not inscriptions for Musa and Arena, friends of my childhood, in a cryptic calligraphy? Beautiful indeed were Musa and Arena. Their epigraphs are composed in an unfamiliar language and written in leaves by the wind. Before we begin to analyse this uh, closely together, I'd like you to pause it and read through again and try and analyse uh, the poem as thoroughly as you can. So first of all, what is the basic plot? What is happening? What is the th train of thought throughout this poem? And then what are the themes? What are the concerns? What is the message that Dobson would like us to take away from this poem? See how much you can get before uh, unpausing and going on with this video. Okay, so I'm assuming you have done that. And let's get into it. So the Greek vase. So the first stanza, in the, in the garden, a Greek vase brimful of leaves fallen from the grapevine when the wind blows. So we're the setting the scene. Where are we? We're outdoors, uh, classically almost now. Outdoors, there is a Greek vase, possibly old. It's brimful of leaves that have fallen from grapevines. Uh, when the wind blows, and then we're left hanging because we have this uh, large enjambment here. So when the wind blows, the leaves spill out like an alphabet. So recap quickly what is enjambment whenever we flow from one line to the next without punctuation. Uh, so it's also here, notably across the stanza from blows to the leaves and then twisting tendrils. A sentence again here is blown my way dissevered from the Odyssey, Odyssey to reformed hazard, you get the drift. There is a lot of enjambment in this poem. There is also a lot of enjambment in the last few poems that we've studied preceding this one, chronologically for Dobson. So what is the point in this one particularly? It's the same as in a couple of the ones before. What is the point of breaking these sentences up? Have a think about it as we go through. We are going to have a look at it at the end again. Uh, but just keep thinking about that. What is the point of breaking up these sentences? Okay. Uh, so when the wind blows, the leaves spill out like an alphabet. Twisting tendrils join the letters in phrases. A sentence. So something is coming back, something the wind is blowing, some sentence, some something is blown my way. Some words perhaps dissevered from the Iliad or the Odyssey, reformed by hazard. Uh, okay, the Iliad and the Odyssey are ancient Greek myths. There are epic poems by an author called Homer. Uh, they're classic Greek texts, very likely that Dobson would have studied them at school. Uh, she would have studied them along with other myths, perhaps that of Selene the Moon and Endymion. So we're in that kind of a mindset. The Iliad and the Odyssey tell the story of the Battle of Troy, if you've seen the movie, and the subsequent adventures of Odysseus, which is one of the heroes in that battle. That's in the Odyssey. Uh, this is linking in with this, this Greek vase idea. So we have some sort of, uh, some phrase, some sentence is coming from this Greek vase brimful. It's been dissevered, perhaps, from these old myths. This Some sentences come back dissevered. Dissevered means something like disunified or taken from or separated from. So dissevered from the Iliad or the Odyssey, reformed by hazard. 
hazard meaning uh, chance or uh, unlucky incident perhaps but in this case maybe just chaos chaotic chance and reformed reformed is a very interesting word so not quite copied it's been reformed maybe recreated something like that so some sentence something has been taken from the past from an old greek myth something from that dobson would remember from uh, her school days and has been reformed by hazard reformed by chance of wind and season is where we're going wind and season so reformed by hazard of wind and season something about the seasons has reformed maybe recreated uh, this this impression perhaps a childhood memory uh, so perhaps something from the Iliad or the Odyssey can't quite see those anymore uh, some childhood memory reformed by hazard of wind and season something perhaps that's reformed in its time and coming again seasonally like a recurring family holiday that's the same but different uh, each time so uh, how are the ideas of winds and seasons used in other poems have a think about that uh, they are used a bit especially this idea of seasons uh, but seasons perhaps takes on a bit of a new meaning in this one especially when quite close to this word reformed uh, how how does the use here mirror the usage in other poems uh, and what could it mean that a childhood memory is coming back in its season so perhaps like uh, song lyrics you can't quite remember or this, a story that you watched a long time ago uh, okay let's moving on so treading carefully among the sentences lines whole stanzas on the paving remembering now more clearly perhaps lines whole stanzas sentences lines whole stanzas getting more more is coming back on the paving among the leaves yeah the leaves forming the alphabet the sentences the words and how are we how are we amongst these how is dobson relating to these she's treading carefully treading carefully in the sense that she steps carefully through the leaves uh, perhaps she values these memories she doesn't want to disturb them she wants to capture this idea that she can't quite remember perhaps capture them before they slip away uh, see capture the moment of the leaves forming sentences on the paving uh, before they blow away in time in the wind uh, perhaps wind is a bit similar to water here for Dobson uh, treading carefully could also be a warning when you tread carefully you are you are uh, scared or you're you're wary not to disturb something so perhaps Dobson doesn't want to disturb or upset something uh, in, this, in this story I think or are they not inscriptions for Musa and Arena friends of my childhood in a cryptic calligraphy so uh, these these sentences coming back in from the Iliad or the Odyssey childhood myths uh, are formed in leaves treading carefully they might not be they might be inscriptions uh, for Musa and Arena friends of my childhood in cryptic calligraphy perhaps there's some sort of uh, honorific for these two uh, so Musa and Arena would have uh, female poets that Dobson might have looked up to as a girl so friends of my childhood uh, in the same way that maybe someone who loves Harry Potter might consider JK Rowling a friend of uh, their childhood or Harry Potter a friend of their child so the muse might refer here uh, Musa the muse might refer specifically to the muse at the start of the Odyssey Arena was a famous Greek poet in her own right she was a real person the muse could also be general in the sense that uh, Dobson often talks about poets or uh, every every man uh, in a cryptic calligraphy so cryptic means hard to understand and calligraphy is fancy writing that you do using a quill uh, friends of my childhood in a cryptic calligraphy something cryptic is hard to understand a code hard to break meaning hard to grasp 
beautiful indeed were Musa and Arena. Uh, the epigraphs are composed in an unfamiliar language and written in leaves by the wind. Okay, so an epigraph is a brief quote or phrase to introduce a work of literature. It might be a, a brief poem or a, a brief phrase from someone uh, at the start of a book. Uh, it's not to be confused with epitaph. Uh, it's composed in an unfamiliar language and written in leaves, written by leaves, sorry, in leaves by the wind. Uh, perhaps the beauty and meaning of old poets uh, is escaping Dobson and our understanding. Perhaps we're recognising this, this beauty of their poetry uh, or of this, this uh, epigraph or something that's coming to us about them but not fully formed and hard to grasp. Perhaps we're recognising that but we're failing to capture it so it's, it's moving on quickly. Uh, have a think about what is the central meaning of this poem. Uh, it's, as always, it's over to you. So I'd like you to actually have a go at writing out a response to this question. What is the central meaning of this poem? After looking through it briefly, uh, analyzing each word separately, what do you think the main idea is? Perhaps you think it's this poem is mostly about returning to this idea of the elusive nature of poetry, of capturing ideas, how ideas even ideas from our childhood that reform are hard to grasp. Perhaps you think it's more about learning to understand stories from your childhood in a different way, returning to ideas in a new season. Uh, a bit like you might <clears throat> think about Harry Potter or Santa Claus differently as an adult than you would as a child. Uh, have a think about it. Try and write out a proper response, so a short paragraph or a long paragraph. Uh, and try to refer to the text as you do that. Before we finish, we're just going to briefly look at the enjambment in the poem. Okay, so Dobson is very aware that poetry has form and has form for a reason. She's doing things very deliberately. So the lines in poetry break up the rhythm, the cadence of speech, and then they add a layer of meaning on their own. So if Dobson didn't care about this, she would just write short passages. So to illustrate this, I've put one, a short passage here. These are the exact same words uh, written now. I've broken it into three short, uh, three short sections. I'd like you to have a read of each. Be sure to pause in your mind or out loud if you read out loud. Pause for the line breaks in the poetry as you read. But when you read the prose over here on the right, read it through completely. Have a think about, as you go, what is the difference? How does the change in rhythm, the change in the cadence, uh, the change enforced by these line breaks, this enjambment, how does the enjambment uh, affect the meaning perhaps? How does it add a layer of meaning? So I'll give you a second, have a read through. Okay, so given that we've just looked at a poem about the fragments of sentences that are half remembered from a broken old vase or perhaps some, some old myths from Dobson's childhood, how might, think about it, how might breaking up the lines and the rhythm of the poem, the rhythm of the sentences, reinforce that message to the reader? So this poem should read to you as a, a sort of slipping memory that we gr grasp at as it glides past. So we're sort of remembering or struggling to remember this poem in incomplete phrases, bits and pieces, clauses without context, sort of jarred and faded memories. A bit like an old Greek vase, we might struggle to piece together the picture. Uh, we can't quite remember. We can try and reform it. It's not the same as it was, uh, but maybe it's, maybe it's something new. All right, I think that's where we'll leave you for that one. Hope that's been useful and I'll see you tomorrow or today if this is when you watch this.